Hello everyone, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. I hope you're having a great week. I am in the mood to paint something for Easter. So I have an older design that um, is from our shop. I think we released this one last year or maybe even the year before. It's just a circle shape and it says Happy Easter right in the middle of it in this fun, cute lettering. Um, the original design had <clears throat> like pink, I think, and turquoise zebra print in the back. But we're not gonna do zebra print today. We're actually gonna use a stencil. <laughs> I'm pausing to take pictures for the blog. <laughs> um, but we're gonna use a stencil. And so we have several stencils in our shop. This may not be something that you guys know that we have, but these stencils are um, 18 inches by 12 inch, most of them are. Um, this one I think may be called a lattice design. I'm, I can't really remember the name of it. But as you can see, they are used and abused over and over again. So the great thing about these stencils is you can just take them to paint parties. You can use them over and over. Um, the key is to just wash them off when you're done because you don't want to have paint start to cake up on your stencils or then you have the problem with your paint kind of um, seeping underneath the stencil and making a mess. Hey Trudy, good morning. Hi Lisa. Y'all say hello as you come in. Tell me where you're watching from. But I think we're just going to keep the design element of this pretty simple. We're going to paint the background in two shades of teal. Now, we could go crazy with the background and do a couple of like really bright, fun colors, but I didn't want it to get too busy because then you might have a hard time reading our lettering. So by keeping it simple with only two colors that are not too different from one another, it makes it easier to read your lettering. Hey, Stephanie. Hi, Georgie. Y'all say hi as you come in. She's watching from Miami, Florida. I bet it's a lot nicer there than it is here today. It's very rainy here in Kentucky. Uh, Mama Roo watching from South Carolina. Hi, Deanna from Missouri. So the colors I'm using are Sea Breeze and Teal Mint. The Sea Breeze is the lighter color. And so um, I think I may actually paint the background with this and then we'll stencil on this slightly darker color. Have any of you guys used stencils very much? Um, let me know what your experience has been with painting with stencils. And I get asked sometimes, does it matter which side of the wood you paint on? No, not really. Uh, you know, this side looks about the same as that one. It's just slightly darker, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you can paint on either side or both sides. Hey, Sharon from South Carolina. Uh, Mrs. B4O says I use them. Carissa from Chris's Collections. Hey, that's a mouthful. <laughs> How are you? Uh, teal's your favorite color. It's one of mine. I have a hard time picking favorites, but I really like this one. Now this, for some reason, this paint is a little thicker. I think because there's not a lot left in the bottle, it started to thicken up a little bit. So I'm wetting my brush to help this paint sort of go farther because it was not smoothing out very easily. So just keep dampening your brush and smoothing that paint out if you've got some thick paint. Hi, Ruth. Terry says, yes, I find them easy to use. Good. Leisha says, I see stencils are getting really popular. I think they're making a comeback. For a while there, they weren't as popular. I have always used them um, when I was doing paint parties in my hometown. I was teaching, and it was a great way for people to add a little bit of pattern or um, design to their door hanger. Even if they weren't very good painters, they could almost always figure out how to stencil a design on as long as they were doing it the right way. There are a couple of like things that make stenciling a little easier. So if stenciling has been a problem for you in the past, maybe you've had problems with the paint bleeding through, um, then stay tuned because the tips that I'm gonna share with you guys today will definitely make it a little easier the next time you try to do a stencil. <laughs> hey Charlotte, I hope you're having a terrific Tuesday also. Eunice says, I use stencils some and I learned early on to buy good quality stencils. It makes a difference. I agree, definitely. Um, one of the things that I've noticed at my paint parties in the past that people had problems with stencils was usually when they're painting and then they don't allow the paint underneath, like the color we're using right now, to dry very well. And they, they jump to the stenciling too quickly. So you really have to let this bottom layer of paint dry before you start stenciling. Otherwise, your stencil is gonna stick to any of the moisture that is still in this paint. And when you stencil on top of it, you go to peel your stencil up, what happens? The paint underneath peels up and then you see the raw wood and you're like, ah, I've ruined it. That has happened at a few of my paint parties before and it's kind of a difficult problem to fix. Usually I can help them kind of figure it out, but it's a difficult problem. 
Hey, Kimmy, you're new to my TikTok. Well, I'm glad you're here. The chalk paint helps it from bleeding through. Okay, I haven't used chalk paint with stenciling, but that's a good tip. Good morning, Paulette. Pamela is excited for our class tonight. I'm glad you brought that up, Pamela. So the design you see hanging up behind me is our Happy Flowers Workshop, and it officially starts tonight at 7 p.m. Central. So if you have not signed up to paint this with us, you can do it for just $10. Even if you don't have all your supplies right now um, and you're wanting to do this, you'll have access to this video for up to a year. So come and join us, participate live with us tonight. And even if you can't paint live tonight, you can at least watch, ask questions and all that. And that's what a lot of people prefer to do anyway, is to watch and then paint later. So if that's what you wanna do, that's totally fine. But you'll just need an 18 inch wooden round. I think you can pick those up at like Hobby Lobby and Michaels, sometimes Joann's. Um, you can also get them for, from us for $12. We have an entire supply list that you can go and download. It's got the paint colors I use, the kind of brushes I recommend, and all of that listed out. But if you're a crafter, odds are you already have most of the things you need anyways. Um, but we're going to transfer the entire design to the wood using graphite paper and a printable template. So the template, a lot of you guys are like, I can't find the template. Guess what? The template is, and the supply list is in the Facebook group. So once you join the workshop Facebook group, go to the guides tab up at the top and there'll be a place that says start here. Go there. That's where you'll find your template and your stencil at all the things you need. No, Shauna, it's not too late to join in with us. It's only $10. Go sign up because it starts tonight at 7 p.m. Central. Pamela says, I love your rounds. They're good quality. Thank you for that, Pamela. Diane's ready for the class. Tracy says, I like the challenge of trying to keep up with your painting. <laughs> if you want to challenge yourself to keep up with me, I am a little bit of a fast painter. Um, you can totally do that. Or you can just watch on the replay and hit the pause button. It's up to you. I try to move a little slower during our workshops, but it's hard because the faster I talk, the faster I paint. <laughs> how do you join the group? So how do you join the Facebook group? So once you um, sign up, you will get an email. It may have gone to your spam folder. In that email is gonna be a link to join the Facebook group. If you've already paid for the workshop and you just can't find the group, try searching. Just use the Facebook search bar and type in Happy Flowers Workshop, and I bet you will find it. <laughs> I bet there's not a whole lot of other Facebook groups called Happy Flowers Workshop. 7 p.m. Central, that's what time it starts tonight. Um, oh, I was reaching for my drink and it's not over there, it's over here. <laughs> Jessica says, I'm a military wife. We're stationed overseas. Uh, hello from South Korea. Well, hey, I'm a former military wife. My husband was a Marine, is a Marine. You don't say was when you're talking about Marines, so they get mad. Um, Linda says, I love to paint live, but I'm really slow, so I use the replay to, paint, to pause it. That's a good idea. Okay, so now that we've got our background all painted, notice how it's not completely perfect. There's a couple places that are a little thinner, that doesn't really matter when you're stenciling. Um, as long as you've got it mostly covered, our stencil is going to cover a lot of the rest of it. Well, this stencil doesn't completely cover it top to bottom. It's pretty close, but it's not completely. So um, I'm going to actually slide it down so that it at least covers all the way to one bottom, and then I'll just have to patch it right up here. So the other trick that I want to share with you is to use these little cheap makeup sponges from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to switch paint colors. We're going to switch to this teal mint, which is a darker color of teal. They want to see your cup. Oh, y'all want to see my cup? Uncle Corey got me this cup for my birthday. If you watch Yellowstone, um, it's really cute. Of course, you know I love me some leopard print, and I love Yellowstone. It's a good show. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be sponge stenciling on with this little makeup sponge. <laughs> Once a marine, always a marine. Absolutely. Dip in your teal mint color. We're not going to start stenciling with all this paint on there. You're going to scrape off as much of it as you can. And actually, if you can kind of pounce some of it off till it looks about like this. You don't want to be able to tell that you've got hardly any paint on there. And then I want you to start in one section and just with a little quick up and down pouncing motion work in a small section. I have to move in slow motion for blog photos. <laughs> You're just gonna start making sure you have good coverage. This is gonna allow you to do really thin coats. I'm only working in this one little small section and let me show you. Can you see the pattern already emerging? Now we're gonna go back and get some more paint. 
this is actually probably better better done not on an egg carton. It's probably better done like on a foam plate or a piece of um, aluminum foil or something like that where you can pounce off some of the excess. Now, if your stencil starts jumping up and down, just try to, you know, hold it as close to, to it as you can with your fingers. It's okay if it bounces up and down a little bit as long as you don't have a whole lot of paint on your sponge. Okay, let's go back and get some more paint. Scrape off the excess. And now we're just gonna work in another section and just keep building on the last one that you did. It's kinda, I always like working in small areas instead of just stenciling all over because it, it helps to make sure you've got even coverage where you're working and so that you don't accidentally um, miss a spot. Where can you get this stencil? It is at shopdoorhangers.com. I did put a link to our the, the stencil section of our shop up in the video description for you. But if you just go to shopdoorhangers.com um, and click on the stencil, like there's like a little section in the menu for stencils. Click on that. Um, it'll take you to the stencils. So there's a lot of different ones. Like I said, I think this one's called Lattice or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay, that is correct. It's called Lattice. I couldn't remember. What color is your base again? The base is um, Sea Breeze. And then the color I'm using on top of that is Teal Mint. So um, if you're doing lettering on top of your stencils, which we're going to be doing in a minute, I'm going to recommend that you don't do two completely different colors. Do two colors that are somewhat similar. Like these two colors are very close in color. There's not a big difference in the colors. So that's going to make it to where you can see... Um, you can read your wording easier. It's not gonna be so difficult to read. Say so, yes, Terry, you should have taped that down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can tape it down. I don't ever tape mine down. Mm -hmm. I just always hold it and go for it. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> but if you are a little bit crafting accident prone and messing things up, feel free to tape it down. I just never do. Laura uses a repositional adhesive. Oh, that also sounds like it would take more time than I than I like to do. Repositional adhesive. I would also be afraid that the, does the repositional adhesive not like mess up your painting surface underneath for when you go to paint your lettering? Okay. It like, yeah, I have like a sticky residue. I would think it would. But maybe it's only on the back of the stencil. Maybe it doesn't stick to the door hanger. I don't know. You can find it in any craft section, in the stencil section. Oh, I, the, I guess she's talking about the repositional adhesive. I don't know. I've just always done things this way, and it may not be the easiest or the best way, but it's fast for sure. She says, no, it doesn't. No residue left behind. Oh, well, good to know. I also don't use these stencils that much. I guess if you were using them a lot, it would be beneficial. Um to put something, I would think that the adhesive would like wear off or degrade or something over time, but maybe it doesn't. <laughs> You're giving me so many ideas, Kimmy says. <laughs> I'm glad. My, my goal is to inspire you because I want you to get bitten by the painting bug and um, join us in the Painter's Clubhouse. That's my membership. So it opens up next Monday, March 28th. But if you are a part of our door hanger workshop, you're gonna get invited early to join. Um, and so you can take advantage of some of the bonuses that we're gonna be offering. You can get into the Facebook group early. You'll be able to participate in um, a special Zoom call that we're doing, all kinds of fun stuff. This takes a little bit of time. It's hard to hard to just whip it out quickly. All right, first happy Let's do some happy mail. That's a good idea. Comment and let me know. Um, let's see. What are your Easter traditions? Comment and let me know if you have an Easter tradition that you like to do. We always dye Easter eggs at my house. Of course, we do an egg hunt. We always have a big, nice meal with family. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> a 
removable vinyl, yes, but that is one time use, yeah. I really feel like my business name should have been the Impatient Crafter because I don't have time for all that. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have the patience or the ADD Crafter. That should have been my, my business name. Wiffle ball game. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. I love that idea. Linda says her husband's family reunion every year. I love that. Yeah, share your Easter tradition with me in the comments and we'll pick somebody at random to send some happy mail to. Family dinner, yes. I'll, I'll be making my historically um, famous ding-dong cake that I always make for every occasion. Okay, so now that I've got the whole thing covered, I'm just going to kind of give it a glance over and see if there's any spots that look thinner than others and give those another pounce. Oops, I moved my stencil. Okay, our Happy Mail winner is An Angie Conklin Hicks. I think I said that right, Angie Hicks. So if you will send us an email, we will um, send you some Happy Mail. Okay, looky here. Peel it up, and voila. Now, do you see where I was talking about right down here? There's a little section that needs a little bit more because it doesn't go quite off the edge to fix that. This stencil is a repeating pattern, so all you have to do is kind of put the stencil back on here, line it up, and then you can just patch that little spot. No big deal. There we go. Now the great thing about these little stencils is you can, or these little um, makeup sponges is if you're even fr more frugal, you can kind of cut this little tip off and use it again next time. Don't even have to rinse it out. So here we go. <laughs> Wanda says yum yum ding dong cake. You love that. Make a bunny cake and paint eggs. That sounds fun. I've never had a bunny cake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just saw her question. Crimson Creation says, do you make the stencils? Yes, we sell them at shopdoorhangers.com. Jessica, happy mail is just me sending you little goodies in the mail. You never know what it's going to be. It's something different every time. But I always try to send you guys some little goodies. You love my glasses. Thank you. They are actually the pair I wear glasses. You can change out the toppers on the front. I have another TikTok video on here somewhere about them. Okay, make sure this is nice and dry because the next part, we're going to use our stencil to transfer the words Happy Easter to our design. And I'm going to grab a piece of graphite paper. This is just a small um, piece of lettering that we're doing, so I don't need a great big piece of graphite paper. Now, the graphite paper is something you're also going to need for the Happy Flowers workshop we're doing tonight because you're going to be transferring the design to your wooden round. So... And what do they do if their transfer paper is not as big as their round? We oh, had that question. That is a good question. So if your transfer paper is small like this and you need to cover, you know, a large area, you could just work in sections. I would recommend that you tape it down. Actually, I'm going to tape this down. Let me um, grab my frog tape. I'm kind of stuck. Oh, this is the big frog tape. So you're just going to need a little piece of tape. You're gonna tape your stencil down first, not your graphite paper, but your, your, your template. And even if you're working with a small piece of graphite paper, it would be helpful if I'd put the tape back in the thing before I put the lid on it. Even if you're working with a small piece of graphite paper, if your template is st um, stuck down, then you should be able to move, position it. So let's position our template first. We're gonna put it kind of right here in the middle. This is a 12 inch round. I printed out um, the template at a smaller scale. So tape it down. That way, no matter where I lift and move this, it's gonna stay put. So the same thing is true for the workshop that we're doing tonight, if you have a small piece of graphite paper. So you're just gonna place your graphite paper underneath. And for you guys who are working with a smaller piece on the larger designs, you're just gonna move your graphite paper around as you start to trace it, after, like after you trace each section. So now all I need to do is trace these letters and you can go around the inside and outside of each and every letter to transfer to the wood. And this, and this is gonna make it to where all you have to do is paint inside the lines. 
That's why painting these flowers on the design we're doing tonight are gonna be so easy because you guys are not gonna to have to freehand flowers. You're gonna be able to just paint inside the lines. Let me know if you see any more questions pop up as I'm tracing. It's hard for me to read comments while I'm tracing. If you get a little bit off the line, that's okay. Just kind of compensate for it a little bit. All right, the bunny cake is two round cakes and one you cut ears off the sides and then the middle piece is left is a bow tie. Oh, that's adorable. Wouldn't it be fun to do a ding dong bunny cake? <laughs> I'm just using an ink pen to do this, so you, you can even use um, a pencil or something, anything that would allow you to trace, because it's pretty much just applying pressure to the graphite paper and making the graphite stick to the design underneath. So where did you find the paper? The graphite paper can be found um, like in the drawing section at Hobby Lobby. I think Michaels even sells it. Um, you can also get it on Amazon. Um, Hobby Lobby and Amazon have the large sheets too. So if you want the ones that would cover the whole design, you can get those. Would removable vinyl pull up the paint? Um, if your paint is not super thick, which the, the application that we did, we did one coat on the background and one really thin coat on the stencil, I think removable vinyl would be fine. Um, it just depends on how thick you're applying your paint. Because the thicker it is, the, the bigger the chance that it's going to peel off. So if your paint seems kind of thick, I would recommend like letting it cure a day or so before you jump into doing something like that. Brenda tapes all the, piece, the smaller pieces of graphite paper together. So she has four sheets. That was another suggestion I was going to make is if you have multiple sheets of the smaller graphite paper, you can tape them together to make one big sheet. I just wasn't sure if everybody had multiples of the smaller pieces. So if you do, just tape them together to make a bigger one. I would just tape on the top side, not the bottom side. Any new chair from Amazon? Uh, this chair actually came from Burlington. Um, I had one just like it before that I got from Walmart.com. But it's a white like leather or fake leather bar stool. Okay, we've got the entire design traced. Before we untape it, let's just lift it up and see how it looks. Looks pretty good. So I'm gonna pull the tape off. Let me show you so you guys can see. The entire design is now transferred to the wood, so all we have to do is paint inside the lines. Are your flowers on the sign behind you traced also? Yes, so the design behind me, See how all of the, like this one has different words because there's two versions of the template. So if you want the words welcome instead of hello friends, you can use this one. But the, the flowers are the same on both of them. So yeah, you're going to trace the entire um, design to the wood. And we'll show you how to do that in tonight's workshop. It starts at 7 p.m. Central. Now, the leopard print is not going to be traceable. That is going to be freehand, but don't be afraid. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's going to be very simple. It's not going to be as hard as you think. Um... And imagine if we had to trace all the leopard print, all the letters, all the flowers, we wouldn't know what was what <laughs> looking at everything. It would be too much to trace. Um, and it's just easier to freehand lettering or leopard print. So where did you get the words Happy Easter for your template? So the Happy Easter template that we just use is on our website at shopdoorhangers.com. It's called the Happy Easter Circle. I did link it up above. So you can get this in two versions. You can get the printable template like what I just used or you can get the wooden round with the design laser etched in the wood. So then you wouldn't have to use your graphite paper or your temp template or anything like that. You could just paint it, paint right over the words, do your stencil right over the words, and then you would be able to see the lines to this design through the paint because they're carved into the wood. Then you could just go through and paint your letters. It would be really simple. So how did you not get graphite paper from transferring into your hand? Um, I just really tried carefully not to like put too much pressure or to scratch the graphite paper because anywhere you touch the graphite paper, it's going to transfer it to the design. 
So I think you just kind of have to be careful about how much you're touching the graphite paper. Yeah, so we just painted the pattern on the board using a stencil. If you're just now tuning in, and these stencils are in our shop. Will the graphite come off of this or smear once it's on the round? No, it's like pencil marking. Like you can't rub it off. Like you, you could try to erase it, but it's even harder than regular pencil to erase. Do you have a favorite paintbrush? Um, I love all of my flat tip brushes. These are from the Deco Art website. Okay, let's find a brush to do our lettering, or you could do, let's do paint pens on part of this, because I think this word right here, happy, would be easier done with a paint pen. So I'm gonna use these Artistro acrylic paint markers, and I'm just gonna use the black to do the happy word. I may still choose to do the other part with a brush. I'm not sure yet. We'll get there and then we'll decide. But this part is pretty skinny, so I think it would almost be easier done with a paint pen. If you join the class, can you move on after the live is over? Yes, so everything is going to be done in a private Facebook group for this Happy Flowers workshop. So once you're in that group, you can go and watch the live at any time for up to a year later. So you've got plenty of time to, to do it later if you want to. You don't have to do it tonight. But I do recommend you hop on with us tonight, if at all possible, because we're going to be giving away three prizes during the workshop tonight. And um, some of them are pretty awesome, like paint packs, um, gift cards, things like that. So definitely join us tonight during the live if you can. And then, of course, after the live's over, you're going to be invited to join our Painters Clubhouse early because there are bonuses in it for you if you decide to join early. Because the whole point of these workshops is to give you guys confidence in yourselves um, so that you know you can do this before you join Painters Clubhouse. So treat tonight's workshop like a little test run and see how well you do and how much you enjoy it. Because if you don't enjoy it at all, then you're not going to enjoy the Painters Clubhouse. Okay, there's our, our word happy. And now we just need to do Easter. Um, let's try it with the paint pen, see how it goes. So what do you do with your stencil now that you're done with it? Do you wash it? Yeah, so I'll be taking it into my kitchen sink and kind of giving it a quick wash. Um, and these stencils are cut from seven millimeter thick uh, mylar. So they're pretty durable. You can actually kind of take like a little scrubby sponge or something to them and kind of scrub them a little bit. And um, the paint will come right off. If you have any problems with the paint not coming off, just a little bit of like rubbing alcohol or something like that will break down the resins in the paint and they'll come, it'll come off easier. I used to have to do that after some of my paint parties because we wouldn't have time to wash out the stencils until later and the paint was drying on them. So the way I'm doing the lettering right now on this with this paint pen is the same way you can do the lettering on the workshop design that we're going to do tonight. I'm pretty much just painting inside the lines that I traced on here. I'm like going around the outside edge of each one and then I'm just filling it in. Kind of pump your paint pen ever, ever so often. You don't want to pump it too much because you don't want the paint literally dripping out the end but you just want it to be where it flows really easily. And then next week we have a lot of fun things scheduled. Um, if you're not on our texting list, I wanna um, recommend that you go ahead and text me at the number up in the video description because um, we're gonna be going live every night, Monday through Thursday next week, right here on my page. And um, I'm also going to be going live several times during the day. We're going to do a, a few fun lives where we give you a peek like inside the Painters Clubhouse. We're going to do some lives where we interview Painters Clubhouse members. So if you want to hear what their experience has been like directly from them, instead of taking my word for it, come join us for some of those lives. Ask questions and you might just find that you can relate to some of these ladies about why they love door hanger painting and why they found the, the group to be so helpful. Many of them have gone on to start businesses or to incorporate door hangers into their current business. So 
it's a great way to kind of make painting door hangers even more affordable is by turning around and then selling them or teaching them in local paint parties. Okay, talk about your markers, what size again? Okay, so these are, these are the Artistro paint markers. This is the three millimeter size, I believe. It says they are medium point. Um, Where'd you get? I got them from the Artistro website. We also have them linked in our Amazon affiliate shop. So you can go and grab them there. They come in a 12 pack of rainbow colors. Do you like them better than Posca? I don't like them better than Posca. I probably like them just as much as my Poscas. And I think they're a little cheaper than the Poscas. Um, the only thing I've found is I don't know. I need to do a little bit of looking. I don't know if they make these in um, the large, like, 7 millimeter bullet tip. But I would like to, if they do, I would like to get some in that size. I would say with our UK stickers, I'm going to <laughs> Uncle Corey must know I'm live. He's stopping by apparently. Leah just saw his truck pull up outside, so he'll Peggy probably come in and crash the live. Peggy says she just joined us getting her thing ready for the night. Well, I'm excited to paint with you tonight, Peggy. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's not too late to sign up. It's just $10. I've put the link up in the video description. So if you want to come join us tonight and Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central inside the private group for the Help Happy Flowers workshop, click that link, put in your information, and sign up. It'll give you, um, inside the Facebook group, you'll have the supply list and the template. And if you're a crafter, you likely already have on hand a lot of the things that you're going to need. Matter of fact, if you're very handy at all, you can probably go and cut out your own wooden circle. You're just going to need an 18-inch wooden circle to paint this on. Stephanie just signed up. Awesome. Welcome, Stephanie. I'm excited you're going to paint with me tonight. My favorite thing about doing these workshops is that so many people are just so surprised, I guess, with themselves that, they, that they're able to do something they didn't think they could do. So I love seeing that, oh my goodness, this turned out way better than I thought it would. Those kind of reactions are just so fun for me. I love seeing you guys impress yourselves. Because <laughs> a lot of people to say, well, I can't paint because I can't draw a stick figure. Well, guess what? You don't have to draw a stick figure. You don't even have to be able to draw a period because we give you the template and everything to trace on the wood, just like we did with this project. So drawing is not a, a requirement at all. You just have to be able to hold a paintbrush and follow instructions. Okay, look at this. Isn't that pretty? I kind of feel like it needs like a white drop shadow or something. What do you think? Yeah? Let me make sure this is good and dry before we move on because I don't want to get my, my hand in it. If you're making a smaller round for tonight, how do you shrink the template? Um, oh, so when you go to print the template, if you want to make it smaller, in your printer settings, which is easier to do on a computer than a phone, keep that in mind. On your computer, when it comes up with print settings, it says scale 100%. If you reduce that to like 70 or 80%, hey Corey, Corey wants to come in and say hi? Yeah, <laughs> Corey's crashing. But reduce it to 70 or 80% or something and you'll be able to see it get smaller. If I put my hand right down. <laughs> That's already dry, you're not gonna mess it up. You gotta lean in, say hi. Hello everybody. <laughs> They all send their condolences that your beloved team lost us last week. And I dropped out some more fundraiser stuff. Okay. I'll uh, put See it together this weekend. See how he changes the subject. Yeah, he's yeah. running out now that we're mentioning Kentucky. Yeah, you're right. I am. I'm still hurt over it. I mean. It'll hurt for a while. It's hurt. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye. I have to give him a hard time. I can't help it. How are you able to print the template so big? Um, so, the templates are sized to print on multiple sheets. So, I keep pulling this out to use it as, as an example, but you can see that this, good grief if I can get a hold of it, this is actually like six sheets of paper that have been taped together. And everybody's always asking, why is your show so shiny? It's because I tape it together with shipping tape. So this, the tape's pretty wide, but it makes it really easy, easy and durable um, when I'm taping it together to hold it together a little better. But it's multiple sheets. This is not just one sheet. Even the design that I traced on this one today was two sheets of paper. 
See that? There's a little seam right there. It was two sheets of paper to make it this size. Barbara says 65% will make a 12 inch rim. 65%. Oh, okay, good to know. 65% will reduce a 20 inch to, to make a 12 inch. Or does she mean the 18 inch? I don't know if she's starting with the 18 or the 20. Are you talking about the one for the workshop, Barbara? It's good to know. Okay, I'm switching to the white one because I want to do like a drop shadow. Only I think I'm going to do it, instead of doing it on the bottom and right hand side of the design, I'm going to do it on the left and the top. We're going to change it up. And what paper did you use to print the template on? Um... Just regular printer paper. See how I'm doing it on the left hand side of each part of the letter and also on like the top of each part of the letter. So with the A, we're gonna go down this side, but then also do it across here and then down this side of this stroke. Kind of highlights it a little bit. But you can't do, um, you can't do drop shadows quickly. You have to move slow. Otherwise, you may get confused and do it in the wrong spot. And then you'll be frustrated. Oh, I almost did that too. And some little parts like the Y here are a little bit confusing. So I have to really stop and think about it sometimes before I do it. All right, Barbara was using the workshop template. Oh, okay. 65%. Good to know. Do you know where you can purchase the Mylar sheets? Yes, I have them linked in my Amazon favorites also, the Mylar sheets. If you're wanting, if you have a Cricut, you can actually purchase the files in our shop for making these templates or these uh, stencils and you can cut your own stencils. I'm having to do some heavy concentration here. <laughs> Make sure I don't like put these lines in the right, wrong spot. Yeah, let's do some more happy mail. Comment um, and tell me, do you like the words hello friends or do you like welcome? Let's Which TikTok. On TikTok, <laughs> comment on TikTok. We'll pick somebody from TikTok this time. Did you like the lettering that says hello friends or did you like the one that says welcome better? I gotta give this a hard look for a second to make sure I didn't miss any spots. Oh, I did right there. It's always tricky. I think I may have gotten them all. Now I gotta go back with my black for just a second and clean up a couple spots where I got a little bit over my black with my white. So I'm just going back over the black in a couple of spots to clean it up. Not a big deal. There's a little spot right down here. It's easier to do that than it is to try to get it just perfect the first time. Okay, what do you think of the white white shadow? Do you like that? Kind of makes the lettering look like it's popping off the off the design. Everybody likes hello friends. Y'all like hello friends? Really? Awesome. Okay, our winner is Stephanie Powers 55 on TikTok. Send me an email at info at southernadornmentsdecor.com with your address and I will send you some happy mail. The pens I'm using, Penny, are the acrylic paint markers from uh, Artistro. You can find them in my Amazon favorites. I have my Amazon shop linked up above, and they're in the craft supply section. But they come in 12 different beautiful colors. See that? I use the black and the white the most, surprisingly. Or not so surprisingly. Okay. I feel like it probably needs one last little something around the outer edge to kind of make everything pop and let's do it in white since our lettering in the black stands out so much let's just do like a little bit of a outline 
with white. I'm doing it about a quarter inch in from the edge. And instead of moving my wrist or my elbow, I'm just literally leaning back in my chair to pull this pin. That allows me to get a nice smooth line. And then I stop and I do some cute little dashes. All right, she's, Cynthia says, that are the pins only available on Amazon? She can't find them in hobby stores. Um, I think they're only, I don't know if they're available in any hobby stores, but okay. they are on Amazon and they are also on the Artistro website. Uh, matter of fact, I think if you buy them on the Artistro website, you can use a code TAMRA10, all caps, um, and it gives you 10% off on the website. Uh, Kathy said, the lettering on the door hanger tonight, is it all black? Yes. <laughs> Amber said, oh no, I forgot today was Tuesday. That's okay. If you're just now tuning in on TikTok, this entire video that we did will be available on YouTube in just a little while and you can rewatch the entire thing. You can see how we did the stenciling. We um, transferred the lettering. It's not free-handed. We transferred it using our traceable template from our shop with some graphite paper. We gave some tips for stenciling using a makeup sponge. Um, I saw someone asking earlier, what if you don't have the makeup sponge? These will also work, but just be aware that these hold more paint than the triangle makeup sponges. So you really have to like dab some off on a foam paper plate first so that you don't get underneath the edge of your stencil. Thank you, Colleen. Christine says, I can see that with a beautiful colored bow. I'm thinking this would be super cute on like a big, like colorful wreath for Easter. Um, or it might even be cute, like sitting on a mantle with a bunch of like, like garland and eggs and really cute things around it. What else could we use this for? It's a, this size, it, this 12 inch size is a little small for a door hanger, unless you like have an office or a um, little cubicle or something and you want to like hang up just a small something, the 12 inch would be great for that. But to hang on your front door, I would recommend 18 or 20 inches. It would be, oh, Kathy, I was just thinking that last night, this design, this lettering would also be really cute with stenciling on an egg shaped door hanger. Um, I just happened to have a bunch of these wooden rounds sitting around. So that's why I used this one, but you could use this lettering actually on any door hanger that you're painting it on you know, any shape. The egg would be really cute though. Um, a porch leaner. Yes. I always feel weird about putting this on a porch leaner as the letter O if it's got words on it, but I think that's just my own weird hang up. <laughs> Placemats for Easter. That's a fun idea. I haven't thought about that. Okay, you guys, if y'all don't have any more questions about tonight's workshop, I will get off here, but if you want to join me tonight, $10, that's all this costs to, to, to sign up and watch this tutorial with us. It gets you the printable template like I showed you before. You can download, you can trace it on the design just like we did today with our Happy Easter. Um, all the colors that we used are Deco Art Americana paints, but if you don't have those paint colors, use what you've got. If you already have a purple, use that. If you already have a blue, just kind of like look at it and then determine if you like those colors together and I'm sure it'll work out just fine. If you already have some craft paint brushes laying around, if, you know, if they're, as long as they're like these nice soft nylon ones, they will work. You can do this with us. It'll be a lot of fun. We're gonna do it tonight at 7 p.m. Central in a private Facebook group called the Happy Flowers Workshop. So if you've already signed up and you're not in the Facebook group, you need to go join the Facebook group now. If you can't find it, just search in the search bar here on Facebook for Happy Flowers Workshop. Um, Susan says, how can you stream to TikTok and Facebook at the same time? Two different phones, <laughs> my current phone and my old phone. I've got both of them hooked to Wi-Fi and I'm streaming on two different phones. All right, y'all, y'all have a great day. And if you have any questions, you can text me. My number's up above. I'll see you later. Bye y'all.